what you're doing every day in life is the most important thing. Your time, I feel, is the most valuable thing you have. We need to be doing what we love with people we love and making a huge difference in the world. That's what we're here for. Giving is selfish because it feels so good. So I think the most selfish thing to do is to give. Welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. I'm your host, Deborah Chantry-Taylor, and I'm passionate about helping entrepreneurs lead their ideal lives by creating better businesses. I'm a certified EOS implementer, an FBA credit family business advisor, and a business owner myself with several business interests. I work with established business owners and leadership teams to help them live their ideal entrepreneurial life using EOS, the Entrepreneurial Operating System. Today's guest is a little bit different. Today's guest is an expert in helping you get money and help from the government. He is going to share with us today how you can actually turn it on your head. So I know a lot of us get really frustrated about the fact that government is really hard to deal with or you feel like you can't get anywhere with them. But he's really going to share why it's important that we need to learn how government works so we can make the most of it as business owners, as people, to ensure that we get the most value from it. He's also going to talk about bringing love back into business and bringing love back into life. He is an absolute character. He is 81 years old. He has written dozens of top-selling business books, and he wears a suit all the time with big question marks on it. I'll let you find out a bit more about that. So today's guest is Matthew Lesko. He is from lescohelp.com, and today we're going to be talking about love, government, and money. Today, I am joined by a very colorful character. His name is Matthew Lesko, and you will see if you're watching this on a video that he has the most amazing glasses and the most amazing outfit, which he'll tell you more about in their podcast. But Matthew, welcome to the show. Lovely to have you here. My pleasure. (laughs) Nice to be (laughs) here. It's wonderful how we can talk across the world. I appreciate being anywhere. (laughs) I love it. We just had a quick catch up before we came onto the podcast. I've just heard Matthew's story, but I'm going to ask him to tell you his story himself. So he started in corporate world, Fortune 500 consulting companies, but that wasn't where you ended up. So tell us a wee bit about that, Matthew. Yeah, they don't have fun. I had to get out of there. And also my expertise became after is showing people how to take advantage of government money program. So I was working for Fortune 500 companies. They wanted to grow their business or whatever. And I didn't know anything about government. I was a, like, like a researcher, market research. I had an MBA actually in computer science. And uh, I was a computer teacher at a college level back then too. And I started this consulting business. And I found these rich people who were boring to work with. All they want to do is money, you know, which is important. I mean, that's what the first thing you have to do in life is support yourself. So I think that's very important. But as uh, you indicated a little bit earlier, before we got on about there's other things in life. And I think what you're doing every day in life is the most important thing. Your time, I feel, is the most valuable thing you have. In other words, I sort of feel, I could take my car, my house, all that shit. You take an hour of my time as a boring asshole. You're really robbing me. <laughs> the, the, I'll call the cops on that. All that crap <laughs> I could get again. I can't get there. So how do you spend your time here? You know, doing that. And I think what you have to do, part of it, I think, is is so you don't get down rabbit holes, is find something that's bigger than you to work on. I think when we you know, life is gonna beat you up no matter what, no matter who you are, or how rich or poor or lucky or whatever. You're just going to get beat up in life because that's the price of being a human. And it, it's so easy to get to dwell on that. And, and instead of just letting it roll off and learning from it and, and, and going again, because that's the only way you're going to thrive. And I think that's what we're all here is to thrive, to grow. You're, I feel, or like a, a flower, or a piece of grass or whatever the hell it is. And we have to keep growing or, or we die. And, and at my age now, too, is especially being a man in this culture that I'm in. I mean, most men, like I say, I'm 81 years old. So growing up in the 50s and 60s, as a man, you grow up, you know, trying to make money. 
You try to get muscles. You try to be faster. <laughs> you try to be stronger. You try to be smarter. Well, figured by the time at 81, man, all that shit, you, you're not going to get better at. <laughs> so that's over, man. That's over. And I work on now more things that I can get better at. And you know what the one thing I realized? It's loving. Man, we have a heart. I can work on my heart. That muscle I can grow until I die. And, and it's so satisfying. I never was much on my radar <laughs> most of my life as a, as a man. I certainly was a sensitive person, but I never thought of that. And now I concentrate everything, work, personal, whatever, is, is growing your heart. It's the most satisfying thing in the world. And we take it for granted for some reason. Or I mean, even way in my generation, even using the word love was, I, I thought you had to get married if you said love. And I went, well, that's why I've been married three times. Too. And, and so it, it's not. It, 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 it's all about giving. I mean, it, giving is selfish because it feels so good. So I think the most selfish thing to do is to give. And that's why even the service I have now is showing people how to get government money. But when I started this, I, I sold books and all that did very well. well. Millions and millions of books, New York Times bestsellers and more attention than I ever thought I deserved. That's for sure. Growing up Catholic, this is <laughs> you don't think you deserve anything. And, and, but now it's really about helping people. And, and I thought when I said, okay, books were easier. You could, you could grow that. And I think when we're helping people, you know, as a consultant, there's only so much of my time I could do that. And that's why as a consultant, I used to charge thousands and thousands of dollars for this. I didn't want to help the people who, could pay thousands and thousands of dollars. They were not, not they don't need help. <laughs> and, and these programs are for everybody. I want to help the people who really need that. So I'm so fortunate. A couple of years ago, I finally figured out, build a community where it's only $20. That's all. And, and not only me, but members help each other. And this is the most beautiful thing I've seen. I can't, I, 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 I stumbled into it by accident. I never knew it would be this way. And now members don't, and it makes so much sense when I think about it because, okay, I've been studying this for 50 years. So to me to get excited about something is different than somebody who just starts out, oh, government program, wow. I mean, I can get my rent paid? Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, I know. But you don't, do, <laughs> you'd go to Mars too, maybe. <laughs> they don't care about that. They need a rent paid. And, and so someone who just found out about the rent programs and sharing that with somebody is better to help than me. Yeah, because that's sort of boring <laughs> thing. I hate to say that, but it is. And it also solves the problem by expanding, growing a business, you know, whatever. I forget what that buzzword is now. To grow it. People are helping people. I mean, like I just got a, a note the other day from a member. And we also give grants. See, this is what I do with the profits. We give profits back to the members. They're the ones that are giving us 20 bucks. I never thought I'd make money. I just want to make a living and have something fun to do for the rest of my life. And we're making extra money. So we give it back to members. So every month we give $70,000. I mean, I, that sounds like I have to be a billionaire, but I don't. I just got a little business, a handful of people. That's it. I had no idea. It's more profitable than any business I had in the past. I've had bigger businesses, but not as profitable. And so we give about $70,000 back. And we have four different grants that people apply to every month. And one person put in a, for a thousand dollar grant and said to want to give it to another member who helped her solve a $40,000 grant that she, the $40,000 bill she owed to the IRS. And she walked them through that process of how to get that forgiven. And so that other member saved him or her, I forget now, uh, $40,000. And he doesn't have money to give any, so he's applying to one of our grants to give to another member because he was so great, grateful. So that's just amazing to me. I mean, I, I, I can't believe. And it's not by design. I mean, my design was just to learn how to feed myself. I got to get something that uh, creates income because I still got a mortgage or whatever. And that's the thing, getting something I enjoy doing so I could have the energy to keep 
doing it. Unfortunately, you have to do things in life that you don't like to be self-sufficient. So you're not a burden to other people. But then after that, hmm, you know, if I probably need another suit or two, but other than that. Uh, you're speaking my language. I'm, I'm just going to actually grab something. So I'm sitting here in my office. I actually, so obviously you know, I work with business owners and very, very large business owners, but I actually have um, a lot of things with hearts and love in the office because I actually believe there's not enough, there's not enough, not enough love in business. And I think that's what we have to do is we have to make sure that sure, we have to be sustainable and profitable and all that sort of stuff, but we need to be doing what we love with people we love and making a huge difference in the world. That's what we're here for. Well, that's yeah. what it is. I think you are, and that's why everybody's trying to figure out what to do in life. And we don't know, we're, we're all guessing. And, but when you find it, you could give it more because it's natural for you. You know, if you're trying to do something that isn't natural, somebody else who's going to do that naturally is going to do a lot better than you. So, and, and that's hard to figure out. So it, it but, but, all of life is that way. And so when we learn to do something, you know, you have to fall down a hundred times, you know, and starting a business is right. And most of the businesses really that turned out successful didn't start out with that same idea. It evolved to that idea because we're not smart enough to know what we should have done. We look smart afterwards. When we start, we really don't know. And we got to get out there and get information. And I think Google is the problem. Okay, tell me, tell me more. What, what's, the, what's the challenge with Google, in your opinion? That's where we go. I mean, I'm a data guy from the 70s before Google and trying to manage. That's my first business was getting Fortune 500 companies to manage external information, information about outside their company. And computers back then were only doing inside payroll and stupid stuff like that. But in the 70s is when we, when it, realize that things that are going to affect your organization is not inside the company, outside of the country. And we learned that by the oil embargo in our country. I don't know if you were involved in that in the 70s before companies here just drew straight lines and just worried about manufacturing and all internal stuff. And, and then some little country nobody knew how to pronounce or spell or anything just brought us to our knees, you know. And so it's the external world that, that you know, it rules us and we have to keep track of that. But now, so Google does that, but people go to Google, you want to start a business. You go to Google and start a business. Okay. Well, first of all, you put in say, in our country, what we look, everybody thinks grants. And that's why I say grants because that's in people's minds. I don't, you should say that, but that, that's marked issue for me. <laughs> you got to figure out what's in people's heads. <laughs> and yeah. so Use their language. Want to be in their head. And so it, it, you know, they go to Google and say, okay, I want a business grant. And you do that. And, and you literally get a billion websites. Yeah. You know, and, and grant is money you don't have to pay back. So that's why people want to start a business. And particularly half of our country, half of the people don't have enough money to start anything, let alone pay rent. And so they see that as a, a uh, way to success is starting a business, yada, yada, yada. But they go in and Google grants and, and you can't do that. And what you call, they wind up doing, calling a couple of people. All you're going to call is salesmen. I mean, they're the people who advertise on Google. They give Google money. And the people who actually give out grants are in there, but they're in 20 billion websites that, that may be on page 89 or something like that. You'll never find them. So that's the thing I find. So if you don't have money, I say, just stay out of Google. I mean, you're just, it's terrible. And the other thing is, particularly for a business in our country, I think it's best to say you need help starting a business, not you need money starting a business. And that's something you have to unlearn to do because there's so much help, at least in our country, to help you start businesses. And it doesn't start with money because people don't want to give you money to start whatever the hell you want to do, first of all. So you got to sit down and we have more than money. So, you know, here's a tip right now. SBA, if you're in the United States, go SBA.gov. But you don't want to talk to anybody at the SBA. You want to use their service, their data. SBA.gov, then put a slash, then local, L-O-C-A-L, dash, assistance. And all that after the slash is small letters. Okay, local, dash, assist. Put that. If you want to do it now, if you're online, happy to. 
and you put in your zip code. And what we do as nonprofit and government offices, we support free consultants to help you for free start a business. And you'll have, like in my neighborhood, maybe I got about 20 or so nonprofit or all they're there to do is help you start a business. So they don't have advertising. You know, they live off grants that give them for, you know, just surviving, you know, not, not to give Google money. You have to find them. And our country, I don't know about yours, but our country I see now is divided. Two thirds is capitalism and one third is community, let's call it. So we have people helping people. That's government, which helps people and nonprofit organizations. They're not there to get money from you. They're there to give money to you to solve problems or to grow or whatever it is. So you need home, you need an education, you got to pay your bills. Okay. So we have a third of our economy that specializes in that. The only thing we're trained to do is work with the, you know, the capitalist part, the one that wants to get money from you <laughs> instead, of, instead of the part that wants, wants to give money to you. So that's what I see my work as, is trying to educate people that we have this. And see, the, the pity of the whole thing, the fat cats know this stuff. Donald Trump, I mean, he, if it wasn't for government programs and his father, <laughs> he'd have nothing. Oh, you know, Elon Musk, the government grants up the, they're all living off of that. And then they yell at somebody else you know, being a welfare queen or something like that, you know, which is terrible. So how do I fight that? It's not complicated. It's just we're not trained to do that. We're trained to buy something and people will want to sell us something so they're not going to kiss our ass <laughs> until we give them money. But the people who are giving money, that they get say, paid the same whether they help you or not. See, and that's another loving thing, you know, is that you have to realize that. And so when people are out there trying to find help for their business and they make a dozen phone calls and they're getting nowhere and they get the run around and things like that. And then finally, the person that really could help them answers the phone and say, damn it, why doesn't somebody, you know, because you had a bad day, they could hang up on you and it doesn't affect them whatsoever. You know? and, and so that's what we have to learn that. You know, and that's part of what we do is teach people. And people want to go everything on the Internet. No, you've got to get on the phone. Uh, life is too complicated to think there's an easy answer on the Internet. And particularly with the government, first of all, you want a grant because that's free money. Well, 80% of the free money the government gives out is not even called grants. <laughs> so if you're calling a government office and asking for a grant and they're looking there, you know, we have no, gra no, no grants here. Yeah. <laughs> But they have so much other money, other stuff. Yeah, you know, that's right. It's, that's interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, you've got to make sure that you're looking for the right thing. But I think what was really interesting to me was you said that, you know, it isn't firstly about money. It's about getting the right help because the right help will get you eventually to the right money. But um, exactly. Yeah. I'm just interested to hear a bit more about how your community works in terms of helping each other to get that help. That It's an evolving thing. I mean, First of all, I mean, I, I sold books and other training materials or whatever. So I'd go out and sing and dance and, <laughs> you know, for marketing and infomercials were very popular for me because I like to entertain. I like to make people happy. And, and, and then they get the book and do nothing, you know, and that's too bad. So that's what, what I'm doing now. I'm getting more help. I mean, I've sold 4 million books or something like that. And, and nowhere near the results as I'm getting now with this one-on-one -on -one help. And for $20, I did it in the beginning and charged thousands. But for 20, because it's members helping members. So members will go online and like, here, they'll, they'll be out like, here, they'll have a Zoom call. Hey, you know, I just got this. I did it. You want to learn how I did it? Okay, I'm here. Talk to you. Ask me a question. Wow. You know, for 20 bucks, I get, so that's why I think this is very powerful. It's interesting because I always talk about there's this kind of three legs to the stool that a business owner needs. And, and we talk, I will talk about the, the fact that they need a coach or a mentor. 
somebody you can kind of keep them accountable and, and somebody bounce ideas off. You need an operating system for your business just so you have clarity in terms of what you're doing. And the third one is a peer group. Yeah, you know, there is nothing more valuable, a, pe a peer group. So a group of peers, yeah, which is there's nothing more valuable than being able to talk about things with people who've either gone through it, been there, got done that, got the T-shirt, or are going through it at the same time so you don't feel alone and you get that, yeah, that superb advice. Yeah, that, that's what it is. And then you're not alone. You're not the only one the government hates or something like that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and that soothes it. And that's why I think love and humor is the other lubricant. I feel in society is humor. It makes the medicine go down, <laughs> which means life, because it, it's going to beat you up no matter what. And, and that's what I see. That's why I hate even advising myself. Like people think I'm somebody special or something like that. I want to find people like you that, that see, see how they got it. You know, you could say, I got it because I've been doing it for 50 years. Yes. Someone who just did it for two weeks is getting it. <laughs> Yeah. That's who you could learn better from. Uh, and that's the magic I, I, I feel. And, and all this was not a business plan to me. You know, I spent about five, six, seven years, you know, after we got rid of books and books. I mean, I was in the directory business. I sold directories of government programs. Yeah, that's what it was. But it was books. And, you know, when people stopped buying books, <laughs> and I thought the information was important. And it took me a long time to figure this out. And it's the community thing. And the community is so, I, I think, you know, your culture sounds more friendly than ours for some reason, because I know it less. That here we've lost so much community because we hate each other so much. And so it's important. My son who works with the Surgeon General, I mean, that's his main health problem that our top doc in the United States believe that loneliness is the, our crisis in our country and other people do that. Well, I think, I think it is not just America. I think, I mean, I'm, I'm fortunate to work across America, Australia, New Zealand, various different countries. And also a lot of my clients have, uh, you know, offices and staff over in the Philippines, in Bangladesh, all kinds of places. And I think that the more westernized societies have definitely lost that sense of community. You know, that we, we don't have the, the village that we used to have around us that would actually help us. Um, we've become very isolated. And as you said, people sit on a computer and they look at computers for that kind of connection. Well, that's not, not real connection. I was actually just watching a, a documentary last night about a catfishing case, which was really fascinating because when you're watching it from the outside, anyway, it was a Saturday night or Friday night, and I was just wanting to do something to chill out after a long week at work. You know, there are people who are so lonely that will just jump at any kind of friendship or relationship online and then suddenly make it into something bigger than Ben-Hur. But it's not a real relationship, but that's because I, I don't believe we have the, that community connection anymore. No, I believe we live in an apartment in downtown Washington, D.C., urban life, but, but grew two kids who are now 40 or so in the suburbs. And my wife, I met her at this apartment I'm in now 40 some years ago. And we moved back down a couple of years ago to live in urban life. And it, that too changed my life because in the suburbs, yeah, we had friends, but I really didn't. I, I worked too much anyway. And it was friends and family. I hated. it. When do you want to go? And Wendy is the lady who lets me live with her here. She uh, would drag me to parties. I'd be happy once I get there, but I, just, I don't know why. We moved down here and something clicked. Never threw, I think I threw one party in 40 years. I came down here, I throw a half a dozen or more parties every year now. Like this week, I have a Halloween pumpkin carving. We are in the building, about 70 units are in the building. So organizing there, so everybody could, you know, you get in the elevator and you don't, you know, we know everybody and everybody is involved with each other in a way. And all my friends now are, are are living in this building. So I have that, uh, and that's for Halloween. We have a cocktail hour down in the lobby where we're giving out prizes for pumpkins and stuff like that. It's an excuse, you know, and just to drink. And then Saturday, we have called Porch Fest. I got four rock and roll bands in the front of the building uh, that will play from two to six and the whole building will be, you know, dancing in the streets and we'll get 400 people 
uh, out in front of our bill on the rock and roll band. And that is, I never did anything like that before. My wife, she was the one that organizes all this kind. Now I'm a pain in her ass because I'm not <laughs> <laughs> I got all these things I wanted uh, and about with people, you know, and community. So what do you think was the switch? What was the thing that made you suddenly realize that that was important? I have to think part of it is aging and the love thing. And I think that's what happened is, boy, I got to love harder. How do I do that? I, mean, you know, I barely know how to spell the word. I don't know what it meant. And so it was, op- I, I, what I used to call it more was this, Opening my heart. How do you open your heart, you know, to get away of any barriers that we have or preconceived notions about other people? If your heart is open, I mean, that I think is key. I don't, I'm not sure what that means. I'm not sure how to get it. But I think we all sort of feel that somewhere. Uh, and so that's what I think love is, is opening your heart to others. Uh, just saying the word. I couldn't even say it before a couple of years ago. I thought I'd be uncomfortable. And you know what helped me say it more? Because we have a community very diverse. So there's a, a lot of gays and lesbians and things like that in the community. And, and, and getting to know um, this wonderful lesbian lady. And that was the key. When I was able to say love to her. That So if it was another woman, oh, wait, wait. <laughs> I'd be, I'd go out of place. I know I can't say that. But, you know. And that was safe. So it was a, yeah. So I say, I tell her she's my gateway drug. <laughs> and that made it easier. And now, now even to men, I could say it. And I could never have done that before. I, I do think it's about sort of being able to find the people that you feel comfortable with and I, I feel comfortable being vulnerable with as well, I think, because. Um, I know that I'm part of the Entrepreneurs' Organization, which is obviously a, a community for entrepreneurs. And when you see the bonds between those people in that community, you know, they really do truly love, support, help each other. Um, and a lot of them, when they first come in, they're really nervous because business is a dog-eat-dog world, right? In a lot of cases, you know, you, you, you give a little bit and people take complete advantage of you. So, yeah, that's right. But when you actually surround yourself with people who are on a similar journey, people who want to make a huge difference, they will be more open, more vulnerable, and suddenly you realize that people, people love to help. People love to, to be there for you, and there's nothing wrong with love in business. Love is great. <laughs> I think it's the most selfish thing in the world because it feels so good when you're giving. You know, so that's selfish. <laughs> you're making you feel good. <laughs> Well, I always, I always say to people who are afraid to ask for help, because I know it can feel like failure for some people. It's like, if I ask for help, that means I don't, I'm not good enough. And it's like, well, I always say to them, but when you help somebody, how does it make you feel? And like you just described, it makes you feel amazing. So in actual fact, if you're not asking people for help, you're ripping them off. You're ripping them off from having that feeling of satisfaction and joy. So ask for help. You're depriving them of joy. Uh, and, and I remember when I first, earlier wives, <laughs> Or their in-laws like to give us money or something like that. Oh, no, I'm too, you know, whatever. And then after a while, no, I, you know, the problem in life, you want to give. And you finally find some deserving bastard to give to. And they say no. <laughs> I mean, that's being mean to them. And so that's why it, I, I gave up saying no and trying to be independent and all that kind of stuff. You deprive somebody of opening their heart. I do have some in, some questions around the whole government slash help slash whatever they can do for you. So we have similar things in, in here and the same in Australia. I think every government has, you know, has a desire to actually help people be more self-sufficient, grow great businesses, et cetera, et cetera. But there is a sort of a sense that sometimes people working in these government organizations don't necessarily understand what really goes on outside of those government organizations. So you've had a lot to do with it. You've been involved for a long, long time. What would you say to that? I mean, there's obviously, you, you know, you can't, one, one brush does not fit all, but. You'd say people inside government don't know what's going on outside of government. Okay. Well, I see it. People outside the government don't know what's going on inside government. And that is the problem, I think, because the government is a tool. It, it's sort of like, what's the best way to use a lawyer or something? You got to understand what they're good at. I would say the same thing with the government. The government is going to operate by law. 
realize that they could only do things the way the law says, or they all go to jail. Yeah. You know? So they're not going to change. You know, you're crazy. If, if, if and that's why, I mean, I was feeling that. Too. Well, this is a stupid way you doing this, Mr. Government. You know, there's an easier. That's just a, you know, a, a wasted energy to even consider that. You have to figure out what the government's doing, how they do it, give them whatever the fuck they want to do it. <laughs> if you want help, if you don't want help, fine. You know, you go somewhere else. But but you made a really valid point earlier. I mean, the likes of Elon Musk, the likes of Donald Trump, those guys, they have, as you said, built entire businesses, built multi-million dollars from contracts with government and from Absolutely. grants and support. <laughs> see, and you as but it's un- possible for anybody to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. And and see what the government has. And here they're called Apex Accelerators, I think it's dot org. And they're nonprofit that helps you get government contracts for free. They even have grant money to give you money while you're getting a government contract. I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, you would never ask that. That's why the government does stuff. I mean, questioning why that is, it, it is. Why, if you want to change that, then you go into politics and that, that'll take 10 years or whatever. You don't have that time as an entrepreneur. You have to learn. It's like your customer. Your customer is stupid. It doesn't like my product. <laughs> you got to get inside the mind of the customer to figure out how to play, uh, satisfy the customer. And so it's the same way when I hear you say that. Yes, the, the, uh, the government doesn't understand outside the government. Yes, but it, that's not its job. The job is to follow laws <laughs> to do what it's and the laws tell them what to do. It's our job outside the government to figure that out. You know? and, and it can be. No, I, lo- I love it. It's changed my perspective. I think that's really important because I think that a lot of, um, a lot of entrepreneurs who are, who are potentially a little bit on the capitalist side, although they, they do want to do good, probably just can't. They need, to, they need to flip that. They need to go, actually, you're absolutely right. They're doing what they need to do. They're following the laws that they need to follow. But there's opportunity in there for us. And how do we actually work with them? Well, someone said this, this computer is going to help your business. Well, okay, you learned how to use the computer, right? <laughs> Didn't make the computer do what you wanted to do. It's only going to do what it can do. And you have to learn what it can do. So I see it as a tool. And, and now that it represents a third of everything in our economy, boy. You're missing a lot of people here, and I don't know if you have the same thing. I mean, people, just, I don't care what the government does, just stay away from me forever. Fine. And you could live a happy life and never use it. But if you're trying to get from Washington, D.C. to New York, and you hate expressways that are built by the government, it's going to take you twice as long. That's all. <laughs> and so, and everything else, that these are tools to make your life better. And... You know, they're for everybody. And what bothers me is that the people who don't need them the, <laughs> the most, no need, use the hell out of them. And the rest of them really need. I don't know about your country, but here, man, we, at least half the country cannot afford a $500 bill. You know, if a, an expense comes in for 500 they don't have that money to do, do anything to pay that. So they're really living close. Yeah. Okay. So if people um, are at a loss as to where to get started, because I think sometimes this can feel really overwhelming. I, you know, it's all very well to say that the, the other guys know how to do it. But where do I start? Okay. Here's a couple of things. You want to take some notes. One, don't go to Google. Number two, <laughs> uh, start. Remember that you're going to have to talk to people. Don't use the internet and think you understand what the government says on the internet. You have to talk to people. Uh, a couple of places you could start. Okay. If you're in a business, you go to that list. I told you sba.gov slash local assistance and start talking to them. The other th- thing you want to do is go to EDA, which stands for economic development administration dot gov. And you go there and look for your state Every state will have 20, 30, 40, what they call economic development offices. These are government offices 
that help businesses start, grow, whatever they need, okay? You start calling and asking them, hey, I want to start a business. Can you help me? And then if they say no, then ask them, where else can I go? Just don't. And that's why the problem, if you say, I want money, some of them have money, some of them don't, they'll say no. But they know other places because they, they solve this kind of problem all the time. <laughs> it, it, it's sort of like say, uh, in your country, if I look at the uh, internet about something and uh, I think that's true, but talking to you would, would certainly cut out a lot of time about where the stuff really is. And so that's it. So you have that EDA, SBA. Now for living expenses, what we have in this country are two websites that are very good. On the, uh, everything I'm telling you is free. All the websites, you know, that's why when people join us, no website will ever ask you for money, okay? 211.org. And what I like better of the two is called findhelp.org. That has all the nonprofits and government offices that help people individually. So like in my, my zip code is 20009. I do that. And then I put in financial assistance. Well, for my zip code, there are like 200, 300 nonprofit organizations that give out financial assistance. Two, 300. I mean, I would, people, I would think, you know, well, there is a government office for financial assistance, you know, like, no, there's 200 of them. <laughs> and, and, and that's a, it's sort of like customers. You know, if you find 200 wonderful customers for your product, then you start calling every one of those, right? <laughs> and that's it. Instead of going Google and you got 2 billion, <laughs> these are identified. So findhelp.org and you could put in rent. And like for where I am, I, I know there's 70 offices where I live that help people with rent. 70. Every one of them gives out money or help to people who can't pay the rent. Wow. Google, I'm sure they're in there somewhere, but you'll, you'll never find them. And I had to look at, I had to look at 211.org as well. So it's a similar sort of thing. It's just a, a curated site of all the different places you can go to get help, which is fantastic. Yep. What's bad, good about 211, and you could actually call 211, but I think that's bad because you're going to get, I need help on my roof. And you get that. Then you don't get the intelligence. You, you you get the operator telling you what you do. If you have 30 people who solve those problems, you're going to get more out of talking to them or actually doing that work. Not somebody like me telling you, oh, yeah, this is probably the best. You know, I'm not doing that work. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I like find help because you can't call them. You have to call the people doing the work, you know, instead of an aggregator. Okay, the other thing I think is careeronestop.org. This is wonderful if you're a business or want a better job. This has more money, I think, than anything. We've been growing that in the last couple of Biden through a ton of money there for careers. We need higher paying careers. This is where uh, you get free training to get a higher paying job. There, we need skilled people so much, they're paying you money. Like they'll pay you maybe... Thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars a year with only a, a high school diploma to train for a hundred thousand dollar a year that you'll be able to do after you know a couple of years or something. But also maybe six months to become a massage therapist or things like that. But also from the business side, what they do, you want to hire somebody. They train train your workforce. They give you money to train your workforce. I mean, there is so much. And I, I was giving a speech at a call center who was taking my calls. Yeah, they, they got like $250,000 from the government to train their call the people to call me at dinner time because they, they, it's all about jobs and creating jobs. And I just want to, I just want to reassure people to this, this exists in all the countries I've worked in that there's always these kind of resources available. It's about how, you know, knowing where to look is, is the most important thing. Yeah, it, it, it's true. And then the other place for healthcare, uh, there's a wonderful database. Uh, needy, N-E-E-D-Y, meds, M-E-D-S, dot org. And remember, anybody who's going to give you money are going to be a dot org, O-R-G, or a dot G-O-V. 
dot coms are going to get money out of you somehow. <laughs> so just ignore the dot coms if you need money and don't have any. Uh, now that is a place everything from free prescription. I mean, right now, I mean, there. I just saw day the other day, like twenty percent of the people under sixty five who don't have health coverage are covered in an existing program, but they don't know. Yeah, I mean, th this is. So this is a database, and also they have information there on uh, nonprofit organizations that maybe you're recovering from a mastectomy or something like that. So it's money to live on when you're doing these kinds of things, too. Uh, free prescription drugs, people that will fight your hospital bills for you for free. So all the healthcare system that is very well organized and is called needymeds.org. Don't you want to go yep, there. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. And of course, you have your own website where you can, people that actually find you and you will help them. No, no, let's, because I think that's really important because I, I love what you're saying on here. You know, you've been studying this stuff for over 40 years. Americans, you know, shouldn't be losing their homes, drowning in debt, buried in bills, or be forced to put their hopes and dreams aside. So, you, you know, this is a, a site they can go to where they can actually get help. So, the, what is the address of the website? Uh, lescohelp.com, L E S K O. H E L P uh, dot com. Yes. And uh, yeah, you can ask us a hundred questions a day if you want. We have live people every time we give out grants, $70,000 every month. And all you need is one sentence to apply. That's it. <laughs> no bureaucracy with us. And it's just members helping members. Yeah, it's a community that. I'm shocked. It just grew by accident. You know, you fall in your nose, and that's why I think you do. Well, you have an idea, but then you go. We're all artists, like Picasso or somebody, I feel. But you and I probably can't paint worth a damn. You know? We're art and artists in what we're doing. And so an artist, like Picasso, has an idea what they want to do, and you, and you throw paint on the canvas, that, ooh, that gives you another idea. And that's how I think businesses or your ideas grow. You have a general idea. But what you're doing now is probably a hell of a lot different than whenever that was. It looked like when you started, right? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and, and that's why I think that the peer groups are so important. So you know, for entrepreneurs, there are things like the Entrepreneurs Organization. There's the Family Business Association. There's lots of associations of things that will actually put you together with other people who are in a similar situation for exactly that reason. Is that you know, being able to have a sounding board, being able to put those ideas out there, get some feedback, and learn from others who've done some of the stuff before so you don't keep reinventing the wheel i believe that the best advice is your customers not friends. i mean i used to do commercials and i do my commercial and i show them to my friends or whatever and then they take their advice or whatever and change it then it, then it occurred to me they never buy anything from tv why am i asking them <laughs> <laughs> yep. so now it's easier to ask customers you know and that's what's great about the internet. See, uh, you, you think something will happen? Well, you don't have to ask somebody. They don't know. They're not buying your stuff. <laughs> How do they know? No, I mean, you, you, you put a, uh, you don't even need the product. You know, you, you put a, a crowdfunding site and this is the product I'm going to sell. Anybody going to buy it? You go out and, and then you find customers that you want to help and see what they need. Try, and that's why so many people start businesses by investing in all this stuff. And, and then going out and find a customer. No, you can't do that. You're wasting money. <laughs> I give you come to LLC, you know, there's sometimes you have to do, but no, you're not in business until you get a customer. So figure out how to get a customer first. That's when you do it. And even if you have a problem, you have a service, then you don't need money. And on the internet, you, get, you, know, you just put, put a website and you got a service. <laughs> you pay your taxes. That's all. Yep. <laughs> Perfect. Hey, look, Matthew, I'm sure there's a lot more you can share with us. You've got huge amounts of wisdom, but I just want to um, say thank you so much for spending the time with us. That website, again, is lescohelp.com. As you can see, Matthew has a real passion to make a difference, and I think that is admirable. Uh, but there is lots of help out there. And as I said in, earlier on, it's like don't, don't feel afraid to ask for help. Asking for help means you're going to make somebody else feel a whole lot better about themselves. So think of it as, as that rather than a failure. Well, thank you, Deborah. And I do encourage you to kind of Google Matthew as well. I mean, I think you will love um, some of the stuff that he has been doing. And he's certainly a, a character out there, but a, a man with a lot of love to give. So Matthew, thank you for your time. Thank you for opening my heart.
Yeah, thank you. <laughs>